people who speak English as a second language, what phrases or concepts from your native tongue you want to use in English but can't because locals wouldn't understand? I'm Romanian, currently living in the UK. Something I noticed would be how there isn't a phrase for wishing someone to have a pleasant meal when they tell you they are about to eat or that they are eating. We say poftabuna which I think it's the equivalent of the French bonapated. When my co-workers go for lunch I would say stuff like enjoy your meal and often they would look funny at me and be like I'm okay. Thanks I guess thinking I'm sarcastic when I'm not. In Spanish we say buen provecho and I know what you mean about people not understanding the well wishes of enjoying your meal. In Italian we have two different ways of saying I love you. One is ti voglia bene. It's that kind of profound affection you have for family or for friends. But then we have ti amo. And you only use it for your partner when you feel you're really in love with them. Same in Spanish. There's ti quiero and ti amo. I am a native Czech speaker. In a lot of Slavic languages, there's such a thing as softening a word, which exaggerates that the thing is either very small or weak. Example, cal equals a ball, kilika equals a marble. In Turkish there is college elsin which roughly translates to have an easy job, said to people who are working on a job task shift or studying something. It's a great phrase to use at the end of the conversation, to wrap up. Oh how about a lean saglik which is totally worse, translates into I wish health to your hand that's said to the people that make food for you. Many languages have a lot more swear words, and a lot more creative ways to avoid swearing in front of kids. It's kind of like a fun minigame. True, in my country swearing can bring people together instead of offending them. In Dutch we have a handy word called bittershap it's just, is someone feeling sick, ill or in any way hurt. You can use this, it kind of means get better soon and best of luck with what you're dealing with at once. Gezellig in Dutch is a lot of different meanings. Like a room can be gezellig. In English it would be cozy I guess but when you have a good time with friends it can also be gezellig and then cozy is not the good word for it. Also a person him herself can be gezellig and in English it would be a nice person. Edit. Said something twice. Edit again. Spelling. German has pretty much the same concept in gezellig. Guess being neighbors does show. In Omani Arabic we use the word ta'yit back. It means, your actions what you said led me to be confused on your intention. That's really useful. The whole internet should adopt it. The Finnish word calls a cornet because I enjoy taking the occasional beer and hate being around people. From Urban Dictionary, drinking by yourself at your house in your underwear with no intention of going out. And for literal translation, corseret equals underpants, or long johns. Cornet equals being drunk, getting wasted. One we, Danish, use a lot is bjorn et genist the bear's favor which means to do something with good intentions but it having freaking horrible consequences. I just notice the concept's absence a lot, because acknowledging good and bad in one word cuts down on a lot of moral argument back and forth. It's technically based on an old, Greek or Persian fable. It's about a bear and his gardener friend chilling until a bee landed on the gardener's face. The bear wanted to do the man a favor and swat the bee away, but being a bear, tore off his face. He had good intention but now the gardener has no face. We have that in Finnish too. Kahan palvalis means the exact same thing. The concept of philatimo, philatimo, it encompasses a lot of different personality traits so it can't really be translated directly. It describes someone who's honorable and hardworking and kind, often expecting no reward for his help yet going above and beyond what's expected of him. It's a good word. In Argentina, and possibly other Spanish-speaking countries, they say semi fulamano which literally translates into my hand left me. You might use it when you overdo something like adding too much of an ingredient to a recipe. Soup too salty? semi fulamano con la sal. In Italy we say the same thing in the same context but our hand doesn't leave us but it slips so translated in English it's my hand slipped. In Germany there's this cool word called dodge. It's used like this, instead of yes, I am, you aren't smart, yes, I am, it's just way shorter because it's just one word, I need that. I like how laconic German can be. 
For anyone wondering about this concept generally, this is something in pragmatics that is probably best defined as a pragmatic gap in a language. Basically, as native speakers of a language, we understand what the lexical items in that language mean. We form a mental model of every lexical item in our head and what exactly that word represents. When we communicate a definition of a word to someone, we communicate a definition, but there is still something missing from that definition that can only be represented in the mental model we've developed. If someone has spent their entire life dealing with wolf hybrids as dogs in their home, their understanding of what a dog is, and their mental model of a dog, is different from someone who may have never interacted with a wolf hybrid. They say to their friend hey, just remember I have dogs when we get to the house. Their friend arrives and goes what the frick that's not a dog. This is a pragmatic difference in our understanding of what a word means. Basically, a pragmatic gap is when there is a model in your head for some concept, but there is not a lexical item in your language inventory to describe this concept. Many times, people when doing what this thread is asking will run into an issue where they translate a word from one language into another language, but they don't feel like the translation is sufficient. You cute murderous suck does exactly this in his post. Comma in Dutch we have a handy word called bitter shepherds just, is someone feeling sick? ill or in any way hurt. You can use this. It kind of means get better soon and best of luck with what you're dealing with at once. They've got this model. They know their word in Dutch, but when it comes to English the words in English don't really represent the model fully. Pragmatic gaps are interesting because it really goes to show that language is this limited tool in representing what's going on in our heads. Anyways, thought you guys might like the information. Source. Currently going to get my MA in linguistics, specifically interested in pragmatics and discourse. In Swedish it a word called ficka it mean go and get something to eat like a snack or a drink. It like wanna get some coffee just ficka is more open to what you want. And I don't like coffee so this line does not work for me. P. Italian here. We giggle internally whenever we think of you fellow Swedes talking about getting some ficker. It's very close to the word for P in Italian lol. It, Slavic language is complaining about the lack of swear words in English. Yes I agree. 90% of swears in Slavic language will be translated as frick crap. I really miss the word pizdiats when talking in English, because there's nothing quite like it to express your deepest feeling of being doomed or something being fricked up beyond any repair. Pizdas is my favorite variation of the word. I worked with Russians for the last 2.5 years, and they taught me so much. Tanto pado para caglar aguado. It translates, loosely, to so much farting for such soft watery crap. Slang way of saying, all this fuss for nothing. Haha, <laughs> in Russian it goes like when a mountain gives birth to a mouse. In English you refer to a guy's bits as balls. We call them eggs which makes for men a jokes involving cracking and scrambling them. Like you'd better wear your jock strap if you don't want your eggs getting scrambled. In Italy we use the word bo which means I don't know but it's more of a slang. Cause we have the literal translation of I don't know, non so. The word bo is more a sound than actually a word. But it has different interpretation so it can mean also something else. Not a lot different from the meaning above, it all depends on how you say it. Not me but my high school Spanish teacher. He's from Spain and kept using phrases that I'm not sure whether he translated from Spanish or just made up. Don't remember all of them. But my favorites were a right highway, wrong gas station and you are as lost as an octopus in a garage. But like, all in a really endearing Spanish accent. God I miss Mr. Vandermeer. Mas pedido con pulpo and un garage it's used commonly. Yes, the first one. Can't think of one. One of my English teachers in Sweden had an English or American husband. They spoke English to each other, but added the word orca from Swedish, meaning to have the strength or energy for something. It can be used when talking about physical strength or endurance. Can you help me with the bag? I don't orca carry it but more often. It's used in contexts where English speakers would say they can't be asked bothered to do something. Even if the Swedish word doesn't imply that the task is unimportant. Just that you lack the energy for it. I don't orca do my taxes tonight. Additionally, about 20 years ago, a slangy, 
ironic meaning of the word appeared among teenagers, in which the word orca by itself can mean who has the energy for that or I can't be bothered to do whatever it is. Icelandic has the same word nena. It really has no equivalent in English. It's I can't be bothered. I don't have the energy and I don't want to all balled up into one word. You could also use it in other contexts like if you don't nana to invite someone to a party. That implies that the person not invited is likely to be a hassle. Just found out that an import qua don't have an English equivalent. It's super used in French. Literal translation would be anything but it has different meaning depending on the context. Two phase en import qua. You're doing things wrong. Say en import qua. That doesn't make any sense this is bulls. Mace en import qua. What a bunch of bulls. Phase quilt chose. En import qua. Do something. Whatever it is. In Brazilian Portuguese we always say tuku that means your butthole. It can be used as an answer to almost everything and it is extremely disrespectful. Teenagers always use among friends. Generally teenager or young adults. But old people find it repulsive. I would love this expression to make sense in other languages but it unfortunately doesn't. Your mom would be a pretty close equivalent in the US. At least when I was in school in the early 2000s. Not sure what the kids do now. I know it is bad, but swearing with diseases is pretty common in the Netherlands. The fact I would like to have that in English is because it really expresses how angry you are. If you would use the word FCK everyone would just be like oh he has a small problem. But if you would swear with, for example, the typhoid people would be like, oh chips, something is really wrong here. Comma oh chips. This in and of itself is interesting. In French, there is the verb biffler which means to hit someone with your dong. In Dutch, I like, it's swaffelen, and was voted youth word of the year a couple of years back. English lack of swear words. Polish has so many swear words for every occasion and they're much more expressive than your frick I wanna build a sentence based purely on swears when I'm angry but I can't really do it using one word. As a Russian kid growing up, I learned the best chains of the best curse words from my mom. She could put six of them together into one word it really is an art lol. The formal you. The second person plural. Provecho. In Mexico we usually say that when someone is eating but you aren't. I don't even think the concept exists in English. In English we say freaking choke for all I care. Question mark Kawetal Alexamen? Cogenudo. De puta madre. How do you feel about the exam? Testicloid. From a W mother. Which means that you did a good exam. No English word can match the absolute universal versatility of the Castilian Spanish Jodor either. I've studied 7 languages and the magic of Jodor and its conjugation is still unmatched. Except perhaps by the Catalan Fotter. Truly the name of God. Norway has the saying jort of jort which basically means what is done is done as in you can't undo what you just did so move on. I know you can say what is done is done in English and just have about the same impact, but it sounds snappier in Norwegian and I always make the same joke every time I say it that doesn't work in English. Jort of jort og elg elg which translated means what is done is done and a moose is a moose and that just sounds like a line you hear spat out from an Estonian stereotype on a Nickelodeon sitcom. Basically the past tense of do in Norwegian gjort sounds the exact same as deer in Norwegian jort. As the g and h is silent so whenever I say the joke what is done is done and a moose is a moose can be double interpreted as a deer is a deer and a moose is a moose. I heard someone else's grandpa make that lame joke when I was 12 and at the age of 20 I'm still saying it like twice a week. My Spanish friend occasionally pulls out o folamos todos, o la puta al rio when it comes time to make a decision. It's a way of saying either we all do it, or none of us does. It translates to either we all frick, or the W goes in the river, which tends to earn her some odd looks. Fifthy. The word for nails on chalkboard feeling or chewing wool feeling or looking a snail slime feeling. I know you felt it. There's a word for that feeling in my language. Two things. I'm Dutch. One. Swearing with diseases. In Dutch. You can say tuberculosis when you're angry, or even shocked impressed, like holy crap. Swearing with diseases is nice because whenever a new disease is discovered you have a new original fun swear word to use, Ebola kind. 2. The word flesenlicker. 
it describes an object as well as a person. The object is used to scoop the bottom of bottles or cans, to get everything out of it. The person is a greedy piece of crap who likes to get everything out of something he's been given. Describes Dutch culture pretty well actually. In Russian, there are words Diavochka and Diavoshka that both mean girl, but Diavochka means a girl under 18 while Diavoshka can mean a teen, somebody older than 16. It would be nice if there was such a difference in English. I've always wanted an English expression like me cago and todas tus putas mutas. In Spanish it means I crap in all your freaking dead relatives. It's a good insult. I feel like using anything more than crap, but, frick, an idiot to insult something or someone in English makes you sound like an utter neckbird or an edgelord. In Bulgarian, you can really go to town with the range of insults. You can call someone a frizzy homeopathic walking cane, call a comeopathian baston, aka, a limp hairy dong that doesn't work, and it will sound perfectly natural. Okay I came up with other Italian words, magari, it means both I wish and maybe, ti voglia bene, it's I love you but not in a romantic way, so it's what you say to family members and friends. You can also use ti amo for family and friends. Which typically means I love you in a romantic way, but it's cool to have the chance to be able to express the two different feelings. Fabiaco it's like food coma but not really. Italian diminutives don't exist in English. Eto in no. Or Spanish. Ito. Ita. Literally can be used for almost any word or name. I'm Italian, but due to how much I'm on the internet, I actually find the opposite often happening. Wanting to express a concept in English not present in my mother tongue, albeit I wouldn't be able to list any because I only notice it happening when it actually happens and then I just rephrase everything and forget about it. In Colombia we have a term, Timato con media bala which literally translates to they killed you with half a bullet but what it means is that you had such a quick and good comeback that it's like they didn't even need a full disc to end you. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.